everybody, Blue Ridge Rider, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna change the rear tire on a 2021 Yamaha MT-03. And first video I'm gonna make is gonna be on pulling the wheel off, and then I'll do a second video on actually changing the tire. I've got some other videos out there on changing the tire, but I'm gonna do this one on a little different format, so hopefully you find it helpful. All right, first thing, let's just do a real quick tool review. So I've got a torque wrench when we go to put the wheel back on. And per my owner's manual, you can see here that the rear axle is going to tighten back to 42 foot pounds or 57 newton meters and the lock nut on the chain tensioner is going to tighten to 16 newton meters or 12 foot pounds so that's good to know i'm going to use a socket wrench and then i've got a 17 and a 19 millimeter socket to pull the axle out then i've got a couple of 12 millimeter wrenches to work on the chain tensioner a four millimeter wrench to allen wrench to pull the speed sensor out on the anti-lock brakes. I probably don't need this, but I find it helpful. And then I've got a 12 millimeter socket to use with the torque wrench to set the torque on the chain tensioner when we're done. And then ultimately when all that's finished, I've got my chain cleaner and we're gonna chain and lube the, the chain up really good and also set the slack on the chain. And then I've also got some blue painter's tape that we're gonna use to support the chain tensioning device on the bike. So this whole little back piece right here, once we pull the axle out, this chain tensioner will fall out and it's a pain in the tail to get back in. So what I do is I just put a little bit of blue tape here. I will tell you, you have to be careful because it will remove your paint, especially on this flat black paint. So I just use a little bit of tape, just enough to hold that in place. So here we go. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is get the bike up on the rear stand. So we've added spools onto this bike. They cost about $20 a pair. You can get them off of Revzilla and we got a cheap rear stand that cost about 20 bucks. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the bike up on the rear stand. I'm gonna try to do this by myself. So we'll see if we can get a good video of this. So first thing you have to do is line these forks up with the spool. And part of the challenge is I can get this side on, but not the other side. If you walk around the back of the bike, you'll see where the other side doesn't line up. So I've got to right the bike. And this is a little challenging when you're doing it by yourself because I've got to balance it and keep my hand around it so it doesn't slip off. And then I got to get both forks lined up at the same time. There we go, close enough right there. And then once I've got the forks in, I'm gonna push back on the rear stand and get the bike up. There we go, so now we've got the bike on the rear stand. Okay, so one of the first things I like to do is take the analog uh, brake speed sensor out. You don't have to do this, but I don't want to damage it. And I think it's just simpler to take it out. So the four millimeter Allen wrench, you just take this one bolt out right here. And the speed sensor. And I messed the paint up just a little bit right there. So I should have protected that a little better. The speed sensor comes right out. I'm just going to hang it out here to the side, put my screw in the box. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, the 19 millimeter and the 17 millimeter bolts. I've got a couple of socket wrenches. So the 19 millimeter is on the axle side and the 17 millimeter is on just the lock nuts or on the actual axle side. So I said that backwards. The 19 millimeter nut is on the lock nut side. The bolt itself, the axle bolt is a 17 millimeter. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is pull the axle out. So the nut on this side is a 22 millimeter. So I've got a socket for that. And the axle bolt itself is a 17 millimeter. So I've got another socket wrench for that. But before I do that, I mentioned these brake tensioners sliding out. So one quick and easy trick to that Again, just a little bit of blue masking tape. You gotta be careful though, because it will damage your paint. It doesn't take much, just enough to kind of hold it in place. And then when I peel it off at the end, if I had to, I guess worst case, I could touch it up. And then we're gonna go ahead and break these nuts loose. Just making sure I got my socket wrenches turning in the right direction. Now, one thing when you got the bike on a rear stand, it is good and sturdy, but I would just kind of Pay a little extra attention there. All right, this is gonna take two hands on the nut. Mm, it is tight. There we go. All 
All right, I'm gonna do one other thing real quick and that's put a set of rubber gloves on. I don't have to do that, but keeps my hands clean. So there's also a washer under the nut. Okay, so I just put all the nuts and bolts I pull off in one box so I don't lose them, makes it easy to keep up with. So I should be able to get the axle out now. So I'm gonna twist it a little bit. Once it starts moving, you can see it coming and there's a washer on this side as well. The, the tire or the wheel will want to drop down as I start pulling this out. So I'm gonna support that with my foot. Okay, I'm gonna support the tire and wheel with my shoe my foot and then I'm going to slide the axle on out there we go and as I get some slack here I'm going to move the wheel forward and lift the chain off and then I'm just going to kind of hang it out of the way right here for the time being and now the wheel slides right out Oops. One of the things that I was going to show you that I let happen, so come up here with the camera. Your rear caliper is attached to the axle and wants to slide off. What I should have done and didn't do was supported this with a little piece of wire or something right there so it's not dangling. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that up with a little piece of wire right now just because I don't want that to fall and jerk on one of the hoses. That didn't fall hard enough to matter. But let me go ahead and show you one other thing here on the wheel. So before you take it to the tire shop or anything like that, what I would recommend doing is taking your cush drive out. So you can grab the chain sprocket here and just wiggle and it comes out. And then inside of here is your cush drive. So I'm gonna set the sprocket in my box with everything else. And the cush drive just sets in here. Doesn't really matter where these pieces go. You can put them back in any order and Sometimes I'll clean this out, just wipe it down good, but the cush drive is what allows some of the shock to be absorbed. When you give it throttle and the tire wants to take off on the ground from the chain, this kind of absorbs some of that shock so you don't destroy your sprocket right off the bat. And the other thing we'll do is take a really good look. If we get in here really, really close with the camera, take a really good look at the sprocket. So they look pretty good. The teeth, I don't see anything you know, bad abnormal wear can see we got a lot of dirt and grease build up on here we if anything we probably over lubricate the chain and then you can see a little bit of trash in here from the cush drive so we're going to clean all that out really good with a rag so let me go ahead and do that and we'll tie the caliper up all right so i keep some scrap wire laying around i'm going to run this through the caliper in a place where a bolt doesn't go and i'm going to go up here through this is the rear peg holder on her bike. We just got the rear pegs pulled off because she likes to look, really. And then we'll put the caliper there. Now, when we go to put this caliper back on, this groove right here, bring around your camera back around here for a second. In fact, let me untie this for a second because this is really helpful to see. You can fight this, especially the first time or two you do it. So bring the camera all the way down here. What you see is this little piece right here. The caliper has to slide on that. So if you don't line that up, if you put it up here and get the axle through here, you'll never get the rear wheel on. You have to put the caliper on this block right here and then slide it up and then slide your axle through. So that's a super important piece to, to know about. Now, the other thing that's really important is when we go to put this back on, it would be really difficult if I don't spread the brake pads here and push the piston for the rear caliper in a little bit, I'm just gonna be fighting to get this rear caliper back on. So I'm gonna get a little plastic paddle and open those brake pads up. Okay, so I've got a little plastic uh, pry tool. It's a trim tool for taking the trim, interior trim out of a car. And I'm just gonna get in here carefully between the pads and I'm, I'm not being overly aggressive, just pretty casual. Go move up and down the pads here. I can feel the piston moving in. Created plenty of room. I can also check the pads. So these grooves that you see in the pads right here, that is a good indicator of your wear. So if that groove were gone and you're all the way down here at the bottom of that groove, it's time to replace your pads. So let me get my tie wire again. And again, I'm going through this hole where a bolt doesn't go just so I don't take a chance of scarring anything up. Get the caliper over here off to the side. Tie this up with some wire. 
I'm gonna point it down just in case I don't poke my eyeball out on it. And let's uh, go back over here to the Cush Drive. So here on the Cush Drive, I'm just gonna take a rag and just wipe down in here. And again, I don't really think this is necessary. You can see a lot of dust down in there. It doesn't take but a second, so I like to go ahead and do it. Good chance to inspect the rear bearing here as well. Um, and it all looks pretty good. Another thing you always want to be conscious of is that you don't mess up your rotor and how you're handling things around, or this little disc here is for the anti-lock brakes. And this shim will also come out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this shim out, put it in my box of parts as well. No shim on this side. That shim is actually inside this part of the cush drive. You can see where the shim is there. So again, I'm going to take a, a rag. Probably should have gotten a little cleaner rag, frankly, but it's all right. I'll go ahead and just give this a little wipe down. I'm going to do the same thing on the sprocket. Just get that heavier residue off of there. And when we put our bike back together, we're really going to clean the chain good and lube it up. Some people might do that now, but I just like to run the brush or the chain around the sprocket while it's on the bike and I've got a chain brush that we'll clean it with. I showed you earlier. So get the heaviest of that grease buildup off of here. Looking pretty good. We might actually, before we put this on the bike, I might take a little brake cleaner and actually clean this up even better. I don't, it's one of those things that I wonder sometimes if it's better just to, to leave the grease on here doesn't hurt anything, kind of helps with the wear, I guess. Mm -hmm. But we may clean that up with a some brake cleaner and just get it good and clean because that right there is pretty, that's pretty cruddy. So I think I will, I'll do that before we put this back on the bike. We'll clean that up a little better. Okay, so back over here on the bike for just a second. I'm going to take the chain. Yeah, I guess I'm going to leave it right there. We're We're good. We're good. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. That's pulling the rear wheel off of a 2021 Yamaha MT-03. Next thing we're going to do is change the tire. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.